Good morning. My name is Good morning. My name is David Peoric. I was also part of the Amor trip this last weekend, and I will be reading the scripture for you. It will be in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. The words should be on the screen as well, or you can listen to me. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And then in Mark 12, 41 through 44, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. A word of the Lord. Thanks, David. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Uh, so I'm Tyler Nazarian, and uh, I get to uh, have the honor of bringing the message this morning. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say a couple thank yous. Um, everybody who, who went on the Amor trip uh, this last week, I'm going to make you stand up. So if you went on the trip, please stand up. And let's give them a little love. <laughs> Woo! Awesome. All right, you guys can sit down. Uh, Thank you guys, uh, everybody who went on the trip, thank you for being willing to go, uh, being willing to put your, your time, your finances, your body on the line. Uh, and uh, it just, it was an amazing, amazing trip. And also, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who helped support uh, the trip, either through prayer or financially. Um, I know of multiple people who just gave generously um, in order to be able to let us go. So thank you to those people as well. Um, and one more thank you, we, we have a, a, a great video we're about to watch, a uh, slideshow video. I normally like always make slideshows and videos, like I've been doing that since high school and I enjoy it. Um, but we got home from the trip, and this is so great for Amor, because Amor is one of those places where you go on these trips to experience things you've never experienced before. Maybe you've never swung a hammer or used a saw or uh, figured out what a square is and how to use it, even though it's shaped like a triangle and it's very confusing. You're like, why is this a square when it's a triangle? Come on Amor, you'll learn. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and so it's a great place to, to try something you haven't tried before. And so we get home from the trip, and uh, Rachel, my wife, says to me, she goes, hey, I think I want to try to make the slideshow. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. And I was telling her, I'm like, I, I'm going to try to put some video and some pictures in so you got a little bit more to learn and, and do. So I helped her with it, and she's the one who made our video for us. So thanks, Rachel. Uh, and with that, let's, let's go ahead and, and watch the slideshow.
Hello, hello. Oh, hey, I'm switching mics. Ah, oh, what a trip. What a great experience. Um, man, it, I, I've been on, I think, a nine, nine or more trips now. I started going when I was a junior in high school, uh, which was a very long time ago. And uh, every year, every year it's something different. It's a life-changing experience. Um, it's, it's something, something unexpected happens. Uh, this year, in my almost 10 years doing this, this might have been the most challenging for me personally. Um, from the build itself to just kind of everything going on, uh, Tim kind of referenced this at the beginning, but so we, we had a big caravan going down and we, we crossed the border and we're maybe seven minutes across the border at this point. And, and Tim's car starts smoking and, uh, and making, making smells and noises that you don't want it to make. And, uh, oh, there's a car in front of him. <laughs> and, uh, Tim had a belt snap on his car and he had lost all power steering and just muscled this truck over to the side of the road somehow. And, uh, and we were out there and we all pulled over with him and we spent about two hours trying to fix it, and we, we had like great teamwork, and I felt like I learned a lot in that moment just about cars, and I'm like, man, I need to become you know, a, an apprentice of Tim so I can learn more about cars. Um, and, and so we're over there, and we worked on the car, and it still, we didn't get it fixed. And so we ended up having a, a, a different, a more representative come to be with Tim, and we left him in Mexico. We're like, someone will be here soon, hopefully. You'll be okay. We got to go. And so we take off because our goal was to, to be at the build site starting to build on Thursday by 1 o'clock. We needed our, to be on schedule in order to be able to finish on time. And so we spent a couple hours uh, dealing with car stuff. Then we get to our campsite, unloaded our stuff, got back in cars to head over to the build site. And we're heading over there, and the build site is about 45 minutes away, furthest distance I've ever gone to a build site. Normally it's about 20 minutes away. And on our way over there, you take a lot of freeways and turns, and a big group of us got separated from, from the Amor guy who was leading, and we are now lost in Mexico. So I'm thinking, God, you're testing me right now. So I am I'm on the side of the road using Doug Lowe's phone, because he was the only one of us who had international calling. Great job, Doug. Next time we go on this trip, we will definitely make sure we have more than one phone that has that. Um, and we'll bring walkie-talkies. A lot of things to learn, good experience for learning. Um, so we're on the side of the road for about another hour, hour and a half, waiting, trying to figure out. I finally get a hold of the, the Amor guy, and he's like, where are you? I'm like, I'm by a big green sign that says something in Spanish. <laughs> he's like, I know exactly where that is. I'm like, really? He's like, no, I don't. I need more. I'm like, okay, cool. We'll see what happens. Uh, so managed to, to get him over to us, and uh, we got over to the build site, and we have to be off the build site by 5.30 every day. We started building around 4.30 on, on Thursday. So I'm thinking, there's no time for anything. On top of that, the place that we're building at, the site, is maybe one of the most challenging sites I've ever been at. I don't know, the pictures kind of do it justice, not really. Um, one whole side is just butted up to like the edge of a driveway where there's about a 10 foot drop. So we couldn't really work on one of the sides, which makes it a little bit challenging and difficult. Um, and on top of that, I just personally was struggling trying to figure out, why am I here? What is this about? Um, I didn't feel super useful at times. Um, last year on the trip, I was kind of the one in charge and, and helping lead the way uh, because Doug wasn't able to come last year. Doug Lowe is like our Amor guru. He, he knows everything and does everything. And Doug was with us this year. And so Doug was, was the point person in charge, and I, I wasn't sure, should I be filling into a leadership role? Should I be just kind of a worker bee and helping out? And I, I really kind of struggled finding my own place and my, my purpose on the trip. And I remember on Friday, we were way behind the build. We're, we're, at this point, Doug and I met. We're like, we're not going to finish. There's no way. We're not going to finish this house. And, um, and I walked away from that conversation thinking, why am I here? What, what does this matter? Why did I... Why did I spend so much money to come on this trip and be so frustrated and upset? Well, that night we had a, a local pastor came and spoke to us and started sharing with us. And uh, the Amor uh, organization offered to Peter, they're like, hey, do you want to have a pastor come visit? And 
Peter's like, sure, sounds great. We didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into. And like the guy starts speaking, and it was nice. And he was, you know, talking to us about how we are all special because God's love. And I'm like, oh, that's sweet. That's, that's lovely. And, um, you know, I was half listening, half exhausted, half frustrated. Um, and, and then he, he starts sharing with us about how 15 years ago, he, he wasn't a pastor. 15 years ago, he wasn't a believer. 15 years ago, he wasn't working with him more. 15 years ago, he and his three sons and his daughter and his wife were living in a small little shack. And 15 years ago, a pastor from Amor came to him and said, we want to give you a house. So 15 years ago, Amor came, built him a home. Now they had rooms. They had a place, they had a, they had a place for, for people to come. They could invite people into their home. They had a home. And it changed his life. It changed his family's life. It changed the direction that they were heading. He became a believer. He became a pastor. His family became believers. He now has one child in college, one on their way going to college. In that moment, I was reminded, this is why you're here. You're not here for you to feel good. You're not here to... Not here to, to, to look at how awesome we are, what we can do. You're here to change lives, to love people. It was a pretty powerful moment for me, um, pretty powerful experience and week. Um, by the way, that wasn't even part of my sermon. I wasn't even planning on sharing that story, but I just kind of sitting watching and thinking, you guys need to hear how awesome this trip was and how incredible it was and how life-changing it is, not only for people there, but for us. Because we get to come home, those of us who experienced it, and tell you. And now you have experienced it as well. So uh, we're continuing our, our look at the book of Mark, and we are in Mark chapter 12. And um, in Mark chapter 12, we're looking at two different passages in two different parts. And one of them, somebody comes uh, uh, to, to Jesus, a teacher of the law comes to Jesus, and he's hearing him teaching, and he heard, he heard Jesus say some good stuff. So he's like, all right, let's, let's kind of test this guy a little. What's the, what's the greatest commandment? What's the most important thing? What's my number one in life? And Jesus responds, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then he says, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. The, the first, first response is, love God with all that you have, all that you are, all that is within you. And what I, what I love about Jesus' reply is it's actually a direct quote from Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. That was like a direct thing that was said. So by him replying with that, he's telling the teacher of the law, he's speaking to him in a language, and it's something that, oh, wow, you, you're, quoting, you're quoting the old scriptures at me. And then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. So God, Jesus says, love God, love others. What's my number one priority? Love God, love others. I think this, this passage, that, that just right there, I, I struggled a little bit writing my sermon, partly because... There is so much in that. It seems so simple, but there is so much there. Our, our number one job is to try to love God and to try to love others like ourselves, the way we love ourselves, the way we care for ourselves, the way we take care of ourselves. Um, when, I, <laughs> when, I, when I think about, like, when I was thinking through this, and I was like, oh, okay, what's your number one job? And then I started thinking about, oh, I remember my first job first job I ever had. I'm sure a lot of us remember our first jobs. Might have been a great experience. Might have been a terrible experience. My first job was actually very related to Amore. So I went on these Amore trips when I was in high school. And it was awesome, exciting, fun. I learned I'm pretty good with a hammer, and I liked hitting things and using a saw, and it was pretty fun. So I turned 18. I guess this wasn't technically my first job I ever had, but this was one of my first jobs. So I turned 18, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go work construction, and it's going to be awesome, and I'm going to love it because I am great at a moor. So I tracked down Doug, and I'm like, Doug, you want a construction company? Hire me. Doug replies, okay. You don't know what you're in for. Okay. So Doug hires me. I, uh, I go and work construction. First day on the job, I've got my new jeans on. Wranglers, of course. I've got my new steel toe boots. Got my 
my, my nice crisp white shirt and my flannel to go with it. I just basically looked up old uh, Home Improvement episodes, and I'm like, Al Borland, I want to look like you. If you don't get that joke, go watch Home Improvement. Um, uh, uh, so I show up to the work site. I've got my like, cool lunch pail, and, and I get there, and they tell me, all right, we need you to dig a hole right there. Okay, I can dig a hole. I can do that. It needs to be three foot deep, three foot square. Make it perfect. We'll be back when it's done. Like, you, guys, you guys are leaving. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got it. Can I, can I borrow some tools? Like, you didn't bring any tools? No. Oh. Okay, here's a shovel. Here's a pry bar. Have fun. The dirt had just been compacted, which makes it very difficult to dig into. I spent six hours digging a hole. I didn't bring gloves. Didn't know that was on the required reading list. And at the end of the day, my hands were bleeding. I was covered in dirt. I go home. My mom sees me. She says, how was your day? And I start bawling. <laughs> it was terrible. I just got my thing back. <laughs> Next day, I show up. My clothes aren't as pristine anymore. The foreman on the site looks at me and goes, hey, new guy. Put the hole in the wrong spot. Fill it in, put another one there. We'll be back when it's done. In that moment, I realized I do not like construction. <laughs> this is not for me. I worked construction for about a month. I quickly learned it takes a better person than I to be able to do it. Uh, <laughs> it, was a great, it was a great experience, great lessons. Uh, I learned a lot, actually. But working construction was one of the hardest jobs I ever had. It was one of the toughest, most difficult things I had ever done in my life. It was my number one job. Jesus tells us our number one is to love God and love others. And that is not always an easy thing to do. Sometimes it can be extremely hard, especially to love others but also to love God. Maybe when we're going through tough times, times of questioning, times of hurt, times of hardship, it's hard to respond in love. When we turn on the news and we see a world filled with hate at times, it's hard to respond in love. When we look around us, when we get cut off on the road, it's hard to respond in love. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, what's right isn't always easy, but what's easy isn't always right. What's right, the right thing to do, is not always simple. It's not always easy. And the easy thing may not always be right. It can be difficult to love. It can be difficult to, to be thankful and gracious and praise God when things aren't going well. Now, Mark 12 goes on with a story of a poor widow who she's at the temple and she's putting her offerings in the temple treasury and people are going through and everybody's putting in different amounts and this poor widow drops in two copper coins, a very small amount. And Jesus calls his disciples over and he points out the situation to them and he says, look, look at what just happened here. Because this widow just gave more than anyone else. Because everybody else is giving out of their wealth, but she's giving out of her poverty, out of what she doesn't have. I think sometimes it's not about what we're giving, but how we're giving. Because that widow, she, she gave out of faithfulness. She gave out of duty. She gave out of love and caring. And that gift was rewarded by Jesus seeing it and mentioning that and loving her in that moment. When I look at these two passages, I see a call to action. There's a, there's a call on our lives. That call is we are to love God and love others, and we're called to bring all that we have and all that we are 
in an offering, in a spirit of giving. Again, sometimes easier said than done. I love that this passage falls on the Sunday for a more. Because to me, this is so much of what this trip and this ministry is all about. We're, we're about this idea of bringing our offering as ourselves. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Offer your bodies. I think that's what this Amor trip is about in so many ways. Offering ourselves. Saying, because we love God, we are going to offer ourselves to go love others. It takes sacrifice. It takes time. It takes money. It takes energy. It takes letting go of some of your sanity at times. But in the end, we change lives. And not just the lives there. Our lives. Because so often, yeah, we're, we're changing some lives there, but we are changing our worldview. We're changing how we see people. We're changing how we see poverty. We're changing, we're changing how we see what we have and our blessings and what we have to be thankful for. <laughs> Just something as simple as street signs is something that's huge, and we can be thankful for that. When we look at our walls, those of us who got to go build, we get to know, hey, we know what's inside those walls. We know that somebody had to cut some fire blocks and put those in there and measure that out. And there's even more than that. I think God is calling us in our lives to look at how we can love and serve others. We look at the story of, of this woman who she brings an offering before God. And then we, we look at the story of Jesus talking about what our most important priorities need to be, to love God and love others. And when we meld those two together, we see the idea of bringing an offering of love. Making making our lives be that offering of love. Maybe it's talking to someone new at work. Maybe it's being kind to, to a loved one at times. I'll be honest, I struggle with that. I, I can be very grouchy and cranky, and I know that I'm not the most loving to my family at times um, because I feel like I have to be loving to everyone else, and so then as soon as my family sees me, I get to turn off for a moment, and I'm not the most loving to them. But we are called to live a life of love, to bring an offering of love to everyone we encounter, to everyone we see. I, uh, this morning, I was driving to church, and I was listening to a song, and uh, it's a song that I had heard years and years ago, and uh, I, I thought about playing it, but instead I'm just going to read some of the words to it. Because as I was listening to this song, I started crying. Because this song is about what we're talking about today. The song's called My Own Little World. It's by Matthew West. And it says, In my own little world, it hardly ever rains. I've never gone hungry. I've always felt safe. I've got money in my pockets and shoes on my feet. In my own little world, it's population me. I try to stay awake through Sunday morning church. Some of you can relate to that line. I throw a 20 in the plate, but I never give till it hurts. And I turn off the news when I don't like what I see. It's easy to do when it's population me. What if there's a bigger picture? What if I'm missing out? What if there's a greater purpose that I could be living right now? Outside of my own little world. God, break my heart for what breaks yours. Give me open hands and open doors. Put your light in my eyes and let me see that my own little world is not about me. We live in a world that says it's about me. I, me, what I want, my stuff. You need the best, you need the biggest, you need the newest. 
have you got the new iPhone yet? I fall into that myself. Experiences like this, trips like this, remind me that my world is not just about me. It's not just about getting to do what I want. It reminds me that we are called to a life of love. We are called to live for God and live for others as an offering. Whether you think your offering is big and strong and great, or whether it's two copper coins, whether you know how to use a hammer or a saw, whether you think you're terrible at public speaking or not, the key is offering yourself, putting yourself out there, and trusting that God will use you to his purpose. I'm going to leave us with this final thought. The offering that you bring is not just money that you put in a plate. It's not just stuff. The offering is you living a life of love. So my challenge to you guys as we go from this place today, let's live an offering of love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you, God. We thank you for who you are, for what you do in our lives. God, we thank you that those of us who got to go this last weekend got to experience you in an amazing, life-changing way. God, we lift up the family of the home that we built. We pray that you can be with them, surround them, protect them. Fill them with you. Help them to know you. God, I thank you for this church, for being faithful and sending people. God, I pray that you can remind us that our own little world is not about us. That there is a bigger picture. Show us how to love like you love. Help us bring our offering We love you, God. We ask all these things in your name. Amen.